Ah, uh, yes. Good afternoon. I'm going to talk to you today about um, wood selection for both the uh, top and back plates. Uh, this is uh, an example of violin making spruce wood, which would be used for the top plate. And normally, uh, these are oftentimes sawed out of a tree. The tree would have been the center of the tree, and the bark would have been on this side. And they're sawn out, and you can buy them where they're split. Um, and when you get them by them split, you can see where the grain runs, you know, for picking out your wood. Uh, and this is a case where I'm going to show you how you can find out how the grain runs without uh, using a split piece of wood and how to arrange it for the best performance in your violin. So to say this is the typical uh, piece of wood, it's sawn out to get the maximum wood. Uh, production out of the tree when you cut it up. Now as the tree is going up, as it grows, the grain doesn't necessarily go perfectly vertical. It kind of wanders around sometimes. And that's actually kind of typical. And so what you want to do is take that natural grain variation, wandering, and use it to our advantage for making a better sounding violin. So traditionally this kind of wood would be um, they saw it and they leave a little coupon where the two match together and so they age it then and they store it that way you know the two pieces are together and then you just make the final cut through the coupon take the pieces uh, do the joint glue it together and then that's the piece of wood you carve out for the top plate or the back plate okay the problem comes when the grain doesn't go vertical and so let's take, uh, by the way, these are out of two different trees. Um, I'm, so if you, this is a special tapping pencil. And I've been uh, talking about it on website, and it's uh, gourmet scented Sminsels by Sminsels of Canada, made from 100% recycled newspaper. And if you can get, uh, these are $2 in Canada, you got to find someone that lives there to get them for you. And instead of wood, this is newspaper. And it's got the advantage that it's a very dull tone that's perfect for uh, tap tone uh, measuring, adjusting. So these are well worth their weight in gold. So let's say this is a piece of wood and it's got some grain run out, or we think it does. The way you tell, it has to be uniform thickness for this to work. And just tap in the center and then tap toward the sides. Yeah, that's much brighter. Well, that's brighter because the grain, I think you can see it, I drew it on with pencil. This is probably exaggerated, but the grain's actually going like that. So as the tree's growing, the grain's running over here and it's making a little wave. And if you turn the piece over, I'm just supporting on my fingertips. It's just the opposite. It's brighter at the ends and not as much in the center. So once you find where it's high in the center, mark that up. Flip the other side, mark it down. Here's the other piece. So it's high, high, low, mark it down. From the other side, High in the center, mark it up. Now, if we put these back together like they're growing in the tree, and we cut the coupon off, and we book match it, we'll see one is down and one's up, and up and down. So all we have to do is we take them apart, turn one piece over, and make it so both sides are up. And you notice we have to recut this joint, make it vertical, and then glue this together. And now we have the ideal orientation. Okay, so that's the upside. Now the advantage comes in, you've got the grain kind of the natural curve like that. Well, when we're making our plate, 
it's also got that natural curve to it too. That means the sound's going to travel with the grain and you're going to get a better sound. So here's an example of two violins. Both have been book matched, even though this is the back plates. And if you tap along, nice and consistent. But this is what happens when you book match and you don't flip the other piece over. Because here you've got the right side up, and as you, the, you get the natural arc as you glue it together, you get a nice consistent tone all the way along. The other side's reverse. So this violin will never perform as well as it would have if they'd simply switched the two pieces over. That's if it's book matched. Flip it over. Redo the joint. Okay, and here's another example. Same situation. It's book matched. Here's a center joint. On one side, it's fairly consistent. Other side, because it's book matched, they didn't flip the wood around. It's going the wrong way. So this is a better sound than that. And this is what they could have had if they simply flipped the piece over, glued them together. So that's the tip of the day in selecting your wood. See if there is grain run out. You do that by having a consistent shape. You're just tapping along. And that becomes up. And then that becomes down. It's high on the ends, low in the middle, down. If it's brighter in the middle, not as bright on the ends, that side goes up, and you'll make a better instrument. Okay? Thank you.